There's nothing more iconic to Australia than a kangaroo. And when I saw this picture on Pixabay of this quizzical kangaroo looking ready to boing out of the, the photo, I just thought, oh, I've got to, got to do this. And I thought I would use line and wash, starting with the pen work. Sometimes I start with the wash and add pen. Sometimes I start with a pen and add wash. If you're interested in seeing a painting of a koala, I'll put a link to one in the description. And that was a line and wash, but starting with the wash. So I've got a piece of paper here which is Bockingford, £140, or that's 300 GSM, and it's got a cold press surface, which is not surface. I've sketched it out just using an HB pencil, and I have to say the proportions were really quite tricky. They were, yeah, quite strange um, getting, getting the because it's so foreshortened and, and distorted. It's obviously really close to the camera. So fine liners, in case you, you don't know, are waterproof pens. These are black. They come in different widths. You need to choose the thickness of your line, really to sort of suit the size of your painting. So I'm going to start off with a, a 0.4 and see how we get on. I might introduce thicker or thinner lines, depending how I feel. Now I'm going to just start with this eye and its lovely eyelashes and I'm going to keep my pen work as loose as I can. I mean, round the eye it is more precise but I am aiming for a very energetic, relatively loose rendition of this gorgeous kangaroo. Once I start coming away from a precise area, I can move my hand up the pen a little and start altering the mark I'm making a little bit more and just making sure it's, it's loose. I can look at my drawing. Oh, I'm just looking that there's some nice light over the side of the, the um, nose there as well that I... So I won't put that in and to just get some of that nose in and then come down. I'm elongating this nose as I go because I don't think I've quite got it long enough. So I can change my drawing as I go and just amend it. I don't have to be beholden to the pencil lines. And that's why, as a general rule, I don't have a really detailed drawing. I don't want to, for a start, to uh, rough up my paper by doing very detailed and, um, you know, rubbing out over and over again until it's perfect. I've got enough to, to guide me to get the, the rough proportions and I can amend things as I go along. I want to get too detailed at this stage. It's always best to do too little than too, too much. I always add more afterwards, but what will be tricky, always tricky, is to take pen away. So far better to put in too little, go back and add some more rather than putting in so much that you think, oh, no, no, that's, I, I wish I hadn't done that. The other thing to be aware of is not outlining everything, leaving room for the watercolour when you come into a, the watercolour to have a job to do. Because what I don't want to do is just do a lovely drawing and then colour it in. I was the sort of child that hated colouring in books because you, you were meant to stay within the lines and that really, really annoyed me. Um, always was a little rebellious. Of course, if that's a style you like, who am I to say that it's wrong? I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying that I just don't like it as a style myself of doing a total colouring in of uh, a, a drawing. I think line and wash is it at its 
best, at its strongest, if the both the watercolour and the line play their part, if they sort of add up rather than just sort of go alongside each other so that uh, it's a two and two equals five situation rather than uh, two plus two equals four. Just check where this, I think this is actually a little bit higher, this elbow, so I'm going to put the elbow there and then there's sort of like a secondary elbow there. So I'm really trying to look at my drawing intelligently as I go along. Again, the fur is a lot longer here. I've got to be aware that this is further away. So I don't want to go too detailed here because the focus is going to be on the head. But I do want to show that fur is a little shaggier round here and round its, its belly. It's just quite nice to, to have a variety of marks. This behind here is its tail going off to the distance. Again, it's kind of foreshortened. And we just need to keep that quite simple. It is probably wise to stop when you think you're I don't know, 95% of the way to where you, you want to go. Ooh, there are some whiskers. Just a bit more definition around there, I reckon. Ooh, let's do a different sort of mark here, a bit more of a scribbly mark, just for a bit of fun, and that'll help bring his muzzle forward. And I think we should stop inking at this point. I'm going to rub out any lines I no longer need. I might need to, for example, leave this line here just so I remember what's going on. And it's just nice to get rid of the pencil now so that it doesn't get set by the watercolour. And also it just gives you a clearer view of what you've actually inked and not inked. And now I think we need to decide our colour palette and get some watercolour on there. Planning out your colours is just a really sensible thing to do because the danger is that you've got a paint box with 24 colours in and you decide to use them all and you just get this sort of orgy of colour. Whereas if you plan them out, you'll get a far more integrated painting. So I've selected yellow ochre and then this is called Aussie Red Gold. How could I not use it with a name like that? It's a Daniel Smith's colour that I bought quite a while ago and I've hardly used. I've got just a transparent grey there which is rather nice. Then I've got this warm sepia, so lovely and brown and you know, these will all mix together well I reckon. And then this is just such a gorgeous colour, which I sort of discovered at the bottom of my paint box. It's purple madder. And I can definitely see bits of pink, like under the mouth here in the cheek and so forth. So I just think that would be fun to zhuzh things up. I've put them out in my palette and I do like to have them all mixed up in a nice creamy wash so that they are ready to go because watercolour is spontaneous and you might see something lovely happening and you want to have all your colours ready so that if something good happens you can make the most of it. My recommendation is that you always mix up more colour than you anticipate needing and you mix it up slightly creamier than you anticipate needing too. It is way, way easier to add water and to take it out. I think I'll stick with this size 10 brush. Simply start getting colour on. And using plenty of water to stroke the animal 
in the way that the fur is growing so I'm just putting some sort of furry marks and then using water to to move it away I'm going to mix wet in wet so that's a little bit of that warm sepia going in there and I am also leaving plenty of white spaces to show where some of that fur is come up here that's a little bit of that grey and we'll just let it mix and do its thing on the paper I think watercolour say is at its best when you don't really try and control it too much let me move this up so that you can see where that foot's going yellow ochre around there Then just trying to get the feeling of that long fur. More shadowed under his chest. Aim to join shapes wherever possible. His funny feet. More yellow ochre. I think I was a little bit strong there. If you put too much colour down, you can always lift some of it off. I quite like what's going on there. I'm not going to do much more than that for that front four at this point. Now, we said we want to capture the light here. So what we're going to have to do is with clean water, wet behind... And wet certainly far beyond where you think the colour will go because we don't want to get a nasty tide line. So let's pull that down to make sure you can see. And then I'm going to use some of that gold and just let it wander and find its own way around there. Maybe connect some of that up to here as well. I'm conscious that I haven't used any of that pink. Oh, well, it's actually purple madder anywhere. And I know most of that pink is on its face that you cannot readily identify. But if we only put that there and don't have it anywhere else, it will look very out of keeping. all the same colours and let those go for a wander on the paper wetting the inside of the ear so that we can put some grey in there and let that wander around as well over here I might just use a little of that yellow ochre And then again, inside the ear is wet and I'm going to take that outside of the ear so that we'll get hopefully nice soft edges to that. We'll grab some of that grey. Let that go for a little wander. We do need a little pink through that ear. Hmm, that's nice. And because it's nice, let's do some there. Some dry, so it's just a little bit more precise. Let's get some pink. Now uh, we want to capture the white on this nose and a bit darker there. This side is more shadowed. I haven't got any brown on that 
or very little brown on the face so I think we'll do that let's come back to we're going to have to because we want this edge to stay white we're going to put clean water behind again quite like this lost edge there so I'm going to try not to touch it it's usually what I say and then immediately I do touch it so this is that Aussie red gold I'm just going to let go for a wander it is darker underneath because this is the light is coming from there so this is shadowed and can't be left white successfully I don't think so I'm going to wet this area just get a bit of colour in there This needs to be darker in here, just to ground it a little. I don't want it to go up into it too much, so I could also use a little bit of that and then encourage it to come that way. So it's really worth looking at what you've got as objectively as possible and working out what you want to do rather than just sort of poking at your picture and, and hoping it'll suddenly turn into something else so for example i really like that shape there i need to leave that alone say so i'm feeling that it's all a bit simple it needs more depth i want more shaping around this this sort of muzzle and nose these need darkening down I'm liking these soft markings here. I'm going to have a slightly finer pen to hand as well. That's 0.2 as well as the 0.4 I was using before. So actually, now having said I was going to go back in with pen, I've grabbed my brush and I'm going back in with a lot more watercolour than actually I anticipated. But that's okay. You you can respond and much as you have a plan, you're allowed to change it. It's just it suddenly felt a lot more natural to be doing a second layer of, of watercolour. I think that's helping already, to be honest. It's just about oomphing things up getting more tonal contrast just grab a little bit of the yellow ochre get that. just felt that was a too big an expanse of white paint its nails sorry let's just paint its nails Remember, this is close to us, so we want to give the illusion of some detail there. This needs to darken down. So that was a bit of the warm sepia with a little bit of grey dropped into it. Because that's just darkened down and then it comes down here. Again, this this leg is relatively close to us, so needs the illusion of a little bit more going on. A lot happier with that. OK, so our roux is dry. And now I really, really am going to go back in with the pen. So this slightly finer pen. I think I hadn't got enough of the fur down here what you might find using pen over watercolor is that it slightly almost um, clogs the nib particularly if it's a fine one if that happens you just scribble on a piece of paper and it, it'll be fine but you sometimes find that it, it just stops the ink flowing a little this claw is quite close to us so it does need a bit of oomph I feel 
and this leg probably needs a bit of fur on it. Oh, I quite like that mark. That's quite nice. In fact, if I like that mark. Let's see if I've there were some bigger marks in there. Right. Let's let's try and sort of echo some of that over here. So you're learning as you go along. So you do something, you think, oh, actually, yeah, yeah, that's just what I was after. And you can do more of it. Oh, whiskers coming off. There must be, yeah, look, there are. Just as I start to look, there are more whiskers coming off its nose. I like that sort of soft, more velvety feel to that nose. I like the layers that I've got going on over there. So let's leave that bit of the nose alone. Got his lovely hair. I'll take some of that over to there. Not all the way along, but some of it. Just do a bit more down here. Okay, we don't want too much going on here. We don't want to destroy that. That was the bit, the shape, that white shape I really like. I like these white bits there. And I don't think that's far off what I want to do. And I do, I then put a tiny bit of spatter. I don't believe in spattering just for the sake of it. But this is such a curious kangaroo. I just feel its nose is twitching. So it's sort of sniffing us and trying to work out what the hell this strange creature is. That was a little bit of that purple. Just something about that that wasn't doing it for me. I'll bring that ear forward a little bit. It's better. Just the way that ear and that the line of its back were coinciding. I don't think that was doing me any favours. My little kangaroo is dry and done and the last thing I like to do is just try and learn from the process and think you know what bits do I like? What do I want to do more of? And of course the converse is what don't I like so that I'll do less of it next time.